So you want to get your private pilot's license, but you don't know what it's going to cost you. My name's Omar, and I'm going to walk you through realistically what it's going to cost you to get your private pilot's license in 2023. So the FAA lists 40 hours as the minimum to get your private pilot's license. Realistically, the national average is 75 hours. That data is published on the FAA's website. You can go look it up. You might ask yourself, why does it take 75 hours if the FAA only requires you to have 40? The problem with it is because the FAA doesn't know where you're gonna do your training geographically. So for example, we're located here at John Wayne Airport in Southern California. We're the 13th busiest airport in the country. The process to get lessons completed at our flight school and at this airport, regardless of what flight school you're at, the student comes into our office, does a short briefing, heads out to the flight instructor's car, drives through a secured access gate, parks their car, does a pre-flight inspection, pulls the airplane out, gets into the airplane, starts it up, calls for taxi, goes to the run-up area, does a run-up check on the engine, calls for taxi again, taxis to the runway, waiting in line for takeoff, takes off, flies to the practice area, which is located about six or seven minutes away, does their work, and then comes back. Now, by comparison, if you're located at an airport without any kind of commercial traffic, your experience is gonna be vastly different than the one that I just described. More than likely, you're going into a flight school that's located on airport property where you can go in, do a short briefing, walk out of the office, and within a couple seconds, be at the aircraft. More than likely, the aircraft is within an eyesight distance of the office. When you get to the airplane, you're gonna do a quick walk around, get in, start up the airplane without moving it for um, uh, startup, saving a bunch of time. You're going to do the run up right then and there. You're gonna taxi to a short runway, take off, do the work, right above the airport, land and come back. Those two processes take different, amount of, different amounts of time. The difference between getting your license in probably about 50 to 55 hours versus about 65 or more hours at an airport like John Wayne or Addison, Texas, or any kind of airport that's located in a busy airspace like a Class Charlie or a Class Bravo. I myself got my license at this airport in the late 90s in 64.9 hours. Now I'm gonna walk you through how I was able to accomplish that and what the costs are today compared to that. The first thing you have to do with your training is be consistent. Don't show up to training one week and gone the next. You're never gonna learn how to fly an airplane doing that. It's like riding a bike or learning how to swim or going to the gym and expecting results. If you're inconsistent with it, you're not going to get results. When I was doing my private pilot training, I was training no less than three days a week and on most weeks, I would add an extra lesson in there and do four days a week of training. That really made a big difference in how quickly I progressed and how, how good I got at the skill set. Uh, when I would go in for a lesson, I would, I would, for example, make a schedule of Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I would fly, fly, fly. And if I had to do a ground lesson on that fourth day, I'd squeeze that in on a Tuesday, a Thursday, or a Saturday. I'd give myself one day a week off where I could just sit, relax, and not really do anything. The second thing that you need to have, which is pretty obvious, is dedication. We typically will assign homework to students at my school. When the student comes back in for their next lesson, it's pretty obvious whether or not they studied at home. There's a saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. There's no amount of lessons you can take that will make you pass this check ride to get your pilot pilot's license. You have to put the work in yourself. When your instructor assigns you homework or talks about a cer certain subject, you have to go home then and that day. It's very important that you do it when it's fresh in your mind. You gotta go rehearse, you gotta go study. You have to read that information when it's fresh in your mind. That's very, very important. You don't need to spend all day doing it. You could spend 20, 30 minutes a night reviewing the information on subject matter. You've got 
YouTube at your disposal. You got all kinds of information at your fingertips that you can use to help you study this. Highly, highly recommend that you stay dedicated while you're in training. If your instructor assigns you homework, go do the homework, write down a bunch of questions, take it back to the instructor, be engaged, be involved. If your instructor is not engaged, then find a different instructor. Make sure that you get quality, top-notch training. The third thing is personal sacrifice. You have to be realistic about your expectations. If you're going out every weekend and you're not devoting time to studying and you want to go to one of your friend's birthday parties or you're just not putting in the time and effort toward getting your private pilot's license, you have to be realistic about how long it's going to take you because the more you put off, and the more you come back to training, you keep repeating steps. Repeating steps in private pilot training means you're paying for stuff a second or a third time. That can drive up the cost of your training tremendously. In another one of my YouTube videos, I talked in depth about how to find a good flight school, but I'll still summarize it for you here. First thing you should do is just do some homework online about the flight schools at your local airport. Check out the reviews, make an appointment to go meet with the owner of the school, check out the vibe, meet with the flight instructors, go look at the airplanes, take an introductory flight. If uh, you're going online and you're seeing stuff that looks questionable, you should probably uh, pay attention to that and choose wisely. Picking a good flight school is really important for your training. Make sure you go with the good flight school. I'll put a link of the previous video I did in depth about how to find a flight school in the description. All right, so now let's get into the cost of training. Let's assume it takes you 65 hours. That's what it took me to get my private. That assumes you're flying an airplane solo for 10 hours and you've got 55 hours of dual instruction. To rent an airplane for 55 hours at $190 an hour, you're looking at $10,450. Some flight schools are more than that, some are less, but that's about the average cost of a 172 these days. The 10 hours of remaining time in the airplane by yourself to fly solo at $190 an hour comes out to $1,900. All right, so let's also add in the cost of the flight instructor. So I've added an extra 15 hours of extra instructor time just to be more realistic to compensate the instructor fairly. So a total of 70 hours of instructor time in the airplanes, what I calculated, that comes out to be $5,250. Another 20 hours can be calculated for ground school in the classroom with your flight instructor. That equates to $1,500. That grand total puts you out $19,100. Keep in mind, if you're dedicated, if you're consistent and you're keeping up with training, you can go through it at three days a week or four days a week and get through this. However, if you're starting for a week, if you're going on vacations, if you're in and out of training, you're not going to be able to reach that 65 hours a realistic number. You're going to be closer to the national average of 75 hours. Additional costs you'll be hit with for the private pilot training. This is stuff a lot of times that uh, schools don't talk about that are included in your training. Medical exam, you got to go see a medical doctor, FA approved doctor. You can't go to your regular doctor. Those guys are charging about 150 bucks for a third class medical. Uh, books, course materials, E6B calculator, plotter of that nature. You want to budget about 250 bucks. A headset, a David Clark 13.4 is a really good standard headset that'll take you all the way to the end of training, about $325 for that headset. Now your knowledge test, that's the 65 question test that you have to take online at an approved facility. That's 150 bucks to take that test. Don't forget at the end of your training, you gotta go take a test. We call it the check ride. The FAA examiner comes in, administers the test. They charge anywhere from 800 to $1,000 to administer that test. That brings the total cost of the extras to about just over $1,900. So your grand total is going to run you slightly over $21,000. Keep in mind, that's for 65 hours at some of the busiest airports in the country. If you're at an airport that's not as busy, it's an uncontrolled airport, there's no control tower, you're probably going to save some money off of that. You might save two, dollars $3,000 off the cost of that. If you get lucky, sometimes even more. Remember, the real cost of this training is going to be how much effort you put into it, how much dedication you have and how consistent you are with training. If you're proactive and you go home and read the material before your, your lessons, you're definitely gonna save some money on the flight training. All right guys, so that wraps up the private pilot cost video update for 2023. Uh, please 
hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. If you found this video informative, it helps us out a ton. Thank you so much.